Okay. All right. So before we actually start the stream, what I want to do is do um, an announcement on Twitter. <sighs> and let's link it to Twitch. Okay. So let's do a short announcement really on Twitter. Um, you got to connect your headphones because otherwise people can hear the echo. All right. I'm going to put on my fucking headphones. Okay, so. Azure? I can't believe you announced so soon your new job. Why? Why, like, a week ago, you are like, trying to keep it confidential. Yeah, but uh, I, uh, you know, because I just signed, I didn't start, now I, I started, you know. But now we're streaming, you know, so people can hear what you're saying. I oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, I thought, I thought uh, you're going to tell me when you're going to press this. Ah, uh, okay. Anyways, is there people in the chat room? No. Okay. Fine. Yeah, but we're uploading the recording afterwards. Oh, all right. <laughs> Okay. Just be just be careful with what you're saying. Okay, good to know. I I thought I just um uh, said a lot of fucks. <laughs> no, I mean language is fine, but just be easy. Okay, so so this streaming is uh rated R, like uh, G. Rated G. Wait, is G like higher than R or lower than R? G is a uh, kid. Oh, is that like PG thirteen yeah. or lower? Okay. No, I'm kidding. I mean, it's not really a regular <laughs> system, but uh, yeah, just tweeted, um, and uh, we can uh, we can go ahead and uh, and get started. Um, <clears throat> okay, so yesterday um, we started explaining about the project, uh, working. Um, on you know what the project is and stuff um and today what i've done let's let's let me open that on the stream uh on the stream window here just just a sec okay so let me open that here Okay, so for some reason my computer is still suffering, like yesterday. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Skype what? is... Windows, sir. Yeah, Skype is uh, killing my computer. So, let me copy that and uh, paste it here. Okay, so <clears throat> we started, you know, talking about the project. Um, and we had some, some questions and some feedback from people. So, you know, people mostly asked what the project is, what the project is about. Mm -hmm. Um, and we didn't really have an answer ready. I mean, we had an answer, uh, li like a spoken answer, but every time someone joined and asked a question, we didn't really have, um, uh, like an answer ready for them that they can go ahead and read. Um, yep. So today I wrote like literally 10 minutes before we started the stream, I wrote this blog post mm -hmm. um, and I did a really, really quick and dirty mock-ups um, uh, nice. for the project. And um, yeah, so I explained what the project is um, and what the project is about, uh, some of our decision about, um, about the tech stack um and uh and so on and so forth um so you know really brief and, and really 
kind of to the point um, and not too fancy. So now whenever someone, sorry, I'm filling water here. It's probably loud on the microphone. So now that people ask, um, we can, you know, we can have a prepared answer for them and it's an answer that they can easily reference uh, later on. Um, and, and we're going to have like a series of these blog posts because after every, every one of our sessions, we are going to essentially, um, you know, upload the video and, and people can watch. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. So, uh, let me open, um, uh, another window here, put it on the second screen. All right. Okay. So today, uh, we are basically starting with, uh, with our to do, um, and again, the way, and, and this, I should have explained this on, um, on the stream, uh, I mean, on the blog post for the stream, but the way this works is essentially that we are working with a to-do list and the to-do list and the feedback list are always on the screen because we're streaming on YouTube, on Twitch and on live edu then we want to make sure there is a way that um, people can see the feedback and not just, um, you know, hear me answering or hear you answering because we can see the, the chat, but, you know, the stream, they can't. They only see the, the code window, which is essentially the essence of, of the stream, but they can see the, the chat and stuff. Okay. Um, so tomorrow in, in tomorrow's post, hopefully I will, um, I will say more about this and, uh, you know, get, get stuff going. Um, okay. So let's see if we have any viewers right now. Um, any people in the chat room? Mm, I don't think so. I don't so we, yeah, we have one on Twitch. Um, oh, and, cool. Uh, mm -hmm. but we just didn't end up. It, Say uh, hi. Don't be shy. And, uh, Say hi to us. Uh, yeah. What's his name? I and, can't um, see it from here. Yeah. So Amit. Why didn't you? Uh, Amit from uh, yesterday is actually. Amit. Us. Hey Amit. How are you? Um, nice meeting you again. So today we are basically starting with our uh, with our to do. Um, and and yesterday we started kind of explaining about how. Uh, how are we going to do, how are we going to go about and adding the, the stuff? And today we're actually going to go and do it. So what do you think we should target for today? We have an hour. So, so what yesterday, what we did is basically we lay out the tech stack, right? And then we discuss where we should start. And then you said, it doesn't really matter. It's like a back and forth type of interactions. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think when you work on the full stack, um, mm -hmm. especially when you work on it alone, then mm -hmm. it's really a back and forth process. You know, it's, um, you, you go and you implement something and then you need the back end for it. So you go and implement the back end for it. And then you have a back end. You, you know, it's, it, there is no point of going, implementing the back end first, thinking about all the API, thinking about all the edge cases, thinking about ev all of the stuff, mm -hmm. you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense, right? Because no one consumes it right now other than you. So a lot of the times what I like to do is I like to have the client dictate the server, right? So whatever I need in the API and we're going to do GraphQL as well, probably. So yeah. whatever you need in the, um, in the API, then, you know, you just expose it. All right, so let's go and do this. Okay, so um, so today, so it sounds like you 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 would prefer to start with some sort of client. Yeah, I mean, I would I would uh, one hundred percent start with the client. Um, I mean, there is no. If, I mean, think about it, right? Right now, if you start with the server side, what are you gonna do? Right. S seriously, I mean, let's let's discuss it for a minute. If you want, sure. if you would have started with the server side right now, you yeah. know, start Rails, new whatever, or a no blank Node.js project. 
then what do you what do you have done? Um, well, I was thinking that if I if I started with a server side, I would have the skeleton models, uh, like the data structure and the tables have mm-hmm. like at least I know for sure that there's going to be two two to three tables that I need, right? Like there's going to be a user table no matter in what sense. Yeah. Um, there's going to be the a table to store like. I I I, I I'm kind of thinking in the object oriented way. Like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna have like a a post for sure, right? So yeah. that's a that's a table by itself, and then the the media, you know. So I mean, if I were to start the server side, I guess that's where I would like start thinking about. Exactly, and I think and I think that's a classic. Really, I mean, when you speak about when you talk about um, like a full stack, like a full stack tech spec Mm -hmm. then i think it's a classic mistake because you can easily 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 yeah i think you can easily overthink stuff um that eventually are going to be much more simple than than you think much simpler you know um so okay yeah i think um i think for for stuff like that i would definitely start with the client side start with like laying out logos and start laying out um layouts and 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 stuff like that okay Um, so let's let's start from the client side yeah okay so for today um and yeah man i mean uh, so first i think uh my computer is completely dysfunctional with 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 like skype Uh, i mean i'm just like trying to go down a line and look it takes like five seconds literally like just to do this so this is to... worse than screen hero yeah i mean no seriously look at this i mean this is crazy um, <laughs> no this is not gonna work this yeah so what i think is um yeah i mean let's see this why is this so bad like yeah cpu is like skype is 50% and then OBS probably because of Skype takes like 140%. <laughs> How about I just SSH, SSH in? Um, yeah, well, that's that's an option. <clears throat> or... Um, yeah, I mean, for now, I mean, for now, let's let's try to, to work around it. Um, what about we go back to Screen Hero? Because this uh, Screen Hero feels like better than this. Well, I mean, let's start. We'll see. So uh, we have this, and then uh, we are March 2nd, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's remove this. And now we can start with the stuff. Okay, so so now what do what do we actually want so we want um a client side project running right and we want um the ability to run specs yes and for the ability to run specs what we really need is to um, choose testing framework, right? Um, yeah. And for the client side project running, we don't really. I mean, we do need stuff. If if I was running it on a on a computer that didn't have Node and didn't have you know all the npm installed and stuff, but obviously I do, so I don't really need. Uh, too much stuff and too much dependencies uh, to install. So I would say here you would need a uh, node installed and you would need um, NPM installed and you would need yarn um, and then uh, NPM init, which we already did uh, yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so this is actually... Um, So this is actually done. OK. 
okay so uh, we can do this so this was done this was actually done yesterday but I mean we can do is as, as, as it done today um, and then ability to run specs right so I think I think we can start with that and then we can add uh, we can add more to this as as we go forward right yep okay so here we have um, what we created uh, yesterday right so we have the creative network client um, and here let's do a tmux session so dash s and we'll call it network uh, client uh, what oh tmux new session new uh, session dash s and network client oh come on why can i type today uh, okay so dash s oh we already have one so let's do a network client two for now because i don't know where the other session is doesn't really matter okay so uh here we'll kind of split the screen to uh two parts um and what we are going to do is here we're going to open up vim and this is going to be like uh, our npm install space so we're going to do npm install dash dash save and whatever on on the bottom side of the screen uh, so as you can see my computer is like really really suffering but we'll try to work around that okay so for now really what we have is just a like a simple uh, a package with basically nothing right so we need to start with filling it up with something mm -hmm. so and, and again we talked about this uh, yesterday um, and there are a lot of starter kits out there so if we go and we look at um, react starter kit you're gonna find I don't know a million um you see like react starter kit here so look at this so this probably has all the npm stuff and build scripts and stuff like that so yeah isomorphic web app and it has redux and it has internationalization probably uh yeah and then bootstraps three um yeah like a lot of stuff right so it has enzyme which is a and flux architecture and pff, whatever um and and i think i mean there is a place for that but you know for me i just really never found myself using that I, unless it's really 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 lean right it doesn't enforce any um any decisions on me i can do whatever i want right so uh, I can choose my, uh, you know, uh, whether I'm using ES6 or ES5. I can choose whether I'm using Flux or Redux. I can choose whether I use Mobix or Redux, and I can choose whatever I want, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I, re I really, really, really never found myself um, using that. So what I usually do is I would just go to a project that I already have running, um and i obviously have uh, multiple of these um and i just you know just copy copy some stuff right uh i copy the package json and, and start with that and um and and kind of work my way around the stuff right uh for here we'll start with doing uh, some stuff manually right mm-hmm okay so let's try and do that. Are you sure you can bear with this? No, oh, it's 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 literally 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 impossible. But let's try. So um, you want to you want to do the impossible? Yeah, well, let's try. You're you're a freedom fighter. Um. So. What do we need here, right? So first and foremost, right? We need um, npm install 
um, dash dash save react and then npm install save webpack and we also need the uh, right, let, 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 let it install okay do you have do you have a package.json file in the um, in the project right now this is this is it what you're seeing here oh this is it yeah it's it's nothing it's basically blank okay when you do dash dash save it means that you install it to the global no when you do dash dash save it means that you install it locally and you save it to the package.json file when you do ah. dash g's you install it globally okay so so this should automatically add these to package.json yeah so, so i should uh, i don't see them oh i don't know i don't see them well it, it will it will re reload here in a minute so you see it's react um so ah. let's go here to the feedback here and our loyal viewer for the past uh, day Amit? Uh, yeah so uh amit said uh webpack should be save dev and 100 percent right actually react um, and webpack should both be uh, save dev. Um, so let's uh, so All right, so this is the question, and it's 100% uh, right. It should be save dev. Um, all right, so let's go back here. And we'll, once this installs, we're going to try and, uh, and change this to dev dependencies. So save dev means that it's owning so dependency in couple, the development There are a couple of dependencies, right? There, are, there is dependencies, as you see here, on uh, line one. And um, the and, and so there, there is dependencies, like here on line 11, sorry. And there is dev dependencies. Yeah. Um, so no, I get it. So React I, should actually stay here, but um, Webpack should should be on the, on the other uh, on the dev dependencies. And it. and we're gonna move it around in a minute. Um, once once it's installed here locally, we can move it around from dependencies to save to dev dependencies and so on. Gotcha. Um, okay. All right, so let's uh, wait for that to go. Uh, this is uh, s s the sort of things that I really hate to stream because there is no value. But uh, <laughs> we, we decided, you know, we decided we're gonna stream the the whole process. So we're look at that CPU. Why do I see like uh, four million, four hundred? <laughs> yeah. <it's> <laughs> Did crazy. you see that? Yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, we we, we should show, we should show it on the stream. Oh my god, it was <laughs> showing him. <laughs> look, 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 look. What is this? Um, this is 491,000. Oh, no, no, no. This, no. Is, this 491 is 491 million. This is 491 million percent yeah. of CPU. Health oh. D is officially taking 491 million percent of my CPU. <laughs> How is this possible? This, this must be a bug. This, oh, you this... think so? This has to be a bug. How can you use 491 percentage of the CPU capacity? Like you can't. How? No, you no, cannot. You can't. It's impossible. Of course. Yeah. This, so this has to be a bug. Of course it is. Okay. So um. <laughs> so what did we install so far? Let's uh, reload the file here, and we have React and we have Webpack. So we can actually start and s and uh, refactor this away. So this should be um, uh, 
Dev dependencies. Yeah. And this is here. All right. So Webpack is actually here. And this is Webpack too. So we're going to have to kind of watch, watch our step around it. Um, what else? So we need the Webpack uh, dev server. So let's install that. <coughs> install dash dash save uh, dev webpack um, dev server. And let's uh, let's add some more. So we're gonna need um, what are we going to need? Uh, bubble. Bubble CLI. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Let me think. Um, what does what does Bubble CLI do? So Bubble is uh, uh, the kind of translator or transpiler between uh, ES6 and ES5. Right. Um, so uh, Bubble uh, Core. Oh, okay. Um, so these are all for Bubble. Yeah. So loader. And uh, what else? And we're going to need the preset. So we're going to need bubble uh, preset. Oh, I never remember those. It's um, ES2015. And bubble preset stage 2. And then bubble preset react, and let's see if by some miracle we have no uh, no no errors here. Are we gonna do ES six? Yes, of course. <laughs> Looks like you got through. No, I didn't. Uh. Um. So this is here. Never understood this really. Oh, understood what? Like this? Come on! I mean, why are you, why why does JavaScript break on this? You mean the comma? Yeah. Yeah, never understood it. I mean, Go doesn't break on it. Python doesn't break on it. Um so what what what's missing? What's missing? What's missing? So bubble loader. Do I have a Oh yeah, I have a typo. I told you there is there are no miracles. So uh Amit so uh, yeah, so let's go to the feedback again. I'm still there. Yeah, he's still here. He's awesome. Amit, where are you from? Are you from United States or are you from um, other corner of this planet? Okay, so he said, I think Webpack should be save dev. React will be using production code, so save. Yeah, so 100%. Okay, so this is installing while my uh, computer is still using uh, 300 and 491 million percent CPU. <laughs> I miss not answering my question. You think he's uh, paying attention to us? Well, <laughs> who knows? Or do you think uh, he preferred to ignore my question? He's from oh, Seattle. He's Seattle. Yay! You pay attention to us. Make me feel really um, proud of myself. You know. But yeah. So is it like? I mean, do you work? Uh, so I meet from uh, Twitch. He says he's from Seattle, and I wonder whether he works for Amazon. Or Microsoft, Microsoft, Expedia. Expedia is in Seattle. 
Yeah, of course. I think so. Or Google. Well, everybody's in Seattle. Everybody has office in Seattle. I think, yeah, no, no, no. I believe Expedia is in Seattle. Um, okay, so let's hope uh, this uh, ends soon. So come on, let's, uh, let's have it installed. So Busy Ellie joined the chat room on Live EDU. Busy Ellie, welcome to the chat. Uh, feel free to uh, ask questions and uh, give feedback. I work at Google in Kirkland. So Amit from Twitch said he works at Google in Kirkland. What, awesome. what, is, Kirk, what is Kirkland? Do you know probably what is Kirkland? Place, probably a place on this face of this planet. Oh... Uh. So Kirkland it must be a city in Seattle, somewhere. Uh, probably huh. close to Seattle. Yeah. All right. We have a Googler. Google used to be one of my favorite company in the world before you guys start showing ads like all over the, my search Steven, results. I told you you're streaming. People can hear you. Yeah. You're not speaking to yourself. I know. So keep your. Uh, my opinion to myself. Yeah. I'm just trying to make the stream more, you know, entertaining. No, it's entertaining enough with professional stuff. We don't need the political stuff here. <laughs> um, right. Okay, so um, what else do we need? Uh, I think... I think for now we need some testing framework so let's start um, save dev uh, let's do a uh, chai and what else hmm. we are probably gonna need enzyme what what is what does enzyme, enzyme do? Enzyme is a framework for testing React. Uh, uh, we are going to need uh, CSS loader and SAS loader. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, Mocha and Mocha. SAS. Yeah, Mocha is a uh, Again, testing um, and React hot loader, and this is oh. really, I think, this is this is literally the the best I can I can think of. So we can start kind of trying to work off that. Is React hot loader the one that allowed the allow like the change to happen right away? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's that's awesome. I love that one. Yeah, this is this is really an awesome one, one hundred percent. Okay, so uh, it's uh, installing now, and while what? it's while it's installing, uh, we can start with our Webpack config. Um, and <sighs> here, let's do um, webpack.config.js. And I'm basically grabbing one um, from a project that I already have running. Um, so let's see. So we have bubble polyfill here that we're going to need to install. So let's do this. So... Here, let's do um, install bubble polyfill. All right. So we're going to have to do that. Uh, what else? Webpack, Webpack dev server, that's fine. Uh, JS6, React hot. And then this is a SAS loader. Oh, we're going to need file loader as well. So let's do file loader. 
file order. Yeah. Uh, I think it's bubble file loader, but for now let's do this as a file loader. All right, let's continue. So file loader, this is what we need. Uh, for now, we don't need a proxy. You know what? Actually, let's leave it the proxy here. We're going to need one eventually. Yeah, for this one, let's do uh, actually instead of the V5, let's do um, API. And here, instead of the 192, because this is a Docker container, so let's do a localhost 3000. Um, and we can remove this. So ESLint, mm, let me think if we need this for now. Uh, you know what, let's, let's do ESLint as well, uh, just for a good measure. So uh, let's do um, install ESLint uh, with um, Airbnb configuration. What's going on as the default? All right. What does what does ESLint do for you? Uh, ESLint is a syntax checker, so okay. it checks you know file um, row length, um, checks whether it's it needs to be a constant or not a variable, uh, let and stuff like that. Simple, basically simple stuff. Not not something crazy. It's not a like a static analysis of the code or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a way to keep um, to keep syntax kind of united across the project. Okay. All right. So now <coughs> um, we have this kind of running. And obviously it's not running, but you know, we started with, uh, we have the webpack config, but we know now that we need the bubble polyfill and the file loader. So we can kind of start um, doing that. So let's see um, how are we installing that? Yeah, so it's like I thought, so um, npm install bubble polyfill I think no it's not <laughs> it's not this is embarrassing so it's polyfill all right so it's bubble polyfill and what did we say we need we need the file order mm-hmm What does what does polyfill do for us? So polyfill basically is a um, you have to think about it as a plugin for incompatible stuff. Right? Think about think about it, right? So you know in JavaScript you have um, object dot assign. Yep. And then you do some object and 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 assign some properties. Yep. So that in, in browsers that it doesn't exist, it needs a polyfill to, to be in place. So polyfill or shim, uh, yeah. Um, and okay. you can also, uh, and we'll put it in the, in the show notes. So let's do this here, feedback. And here. Okay, so let's copy this and we are going to add this to the show notes. Okay. <clears throat> so, all right, so this is, uh, this is gonna continue. For, dude, for tomorrow we're definitely not doing Skype. 
Yeah, let's try Zoom tomorrow. No, tomorrow we're going to do SSH. Okay. And we're going to talk on Slack or something. I think this is the, le the least resource heavy stuff. Um, so let's see here. Go to the to do. And uh, we have the polyfill and the loader done. So we can tag those as done. And we need ESLint. So, um, <clears throat> so for ESLint, um, let's do this. So um, npm install uh, dash dash save dev, and we're gonna install ESLint and ESLint uh, config Airbnb and es lint um, come on uh, plugin for uh, import and what else and for react okay and I think that's I think for now this is fine so let's see what we do have here in the run so, oh, actually, we need to do something else here. So first, let's wait for the these packages to install, and then we're going to need to start and uh, kind of try and run the project. What do you mean try and run? There's nothing in the project. Yeah, just have a simple, uh, you know, web page where we load it with ah, React. Okay. And then there is, you know, we see a text that's coming from a simple React component. You know what I mean? So this will test the bubble. It will test ECMAScript 6. It will uh, it will test our package JSON. It will test, you know, it will test kind of everything. Yep. Um, so uh, let's see here in terms of uh, to-dos. So um, we are now on the client side project running uh, type side of things. Okay, so uh, let's uh, continue with that and see how the project is is running. Okay, so this is running. It's loading stuff. And actually, while this is running, I can do here, I can go and what do we have here now? We, we only have the node modules, the package JSON, and the Webpack config. And actually, we have git, but our git ignore file does not ignore node modules, and it should definitely ignore node modules. So let's uh, open that up and do node uh, modules and uh, dist, which is going to be our distribution. So we can do that and now we should not have node modules here. Yeah, so we we uh, again I, I keep um, I keep answering before I follow my own rule of putting the feedback on the screen. So I meet just a sec. Uh, okay, so I meet here. So Amit burst or burst saying uh, that I think Yarn might be faster for installing dependencies if you're interested in using that. So 100% I'm interested in using that. Uh, I did plan on using that, but um, for uh, for now, like my computer is is suffering so much that I don't think it it will matter. Like I'm literally on uh, <laughs> 1,391 million percent CPU usage. Um, because of because of Skype, so um, um, yeah. 
but now we can run yarn and from now on we can do it with uh, with yarn and yarn add stuff but okay so for now let's see this so we have our git ignore we have the package.json we have the webpack config so now let's go to the package.json and add some um, add some stuff right so let's do this let's go uh, package.json and we are going to do uh, a start and again I'm basically copying from uh, another project so this is gonna be the start uh, which is just gonna be um, webpack dev server with progress and hot uh, with which is gonna do hot reload um, and what we can also do is uh, test and test watch um, which are also uh, very uh, very nice um, and we can remove this so it will not break and save uh, what else do we need we need some bubble settings um, and some presets so let's do that question for you here the sure. scripts here when do this script gets run? Is it like when do you, you do, do npm run? So you do npm run. So then npm run start runs this, you know. Okay, so like like do you do you need to do like npm test and then you will run like Mocha compilers and all that stuff? Npm run test, I think. Yeah. Um. Okay. So React and stage two. All right. So this is cool. And now we can actually do um, make dear uh, SRC and we can start adding some code that is not what I call jarhead code as you are aware. Um, so let's go to the SRC and then um, index.js. So what do we need here? So we're gonna need um, import React from um, React. Um, we are going to need, uh, so for now, I don't know if I want a router uh, but we are going to need import of, um, no, you don't know, I, I don't need this as well. So let's do this. So, so for now, really, I, I, I really don't need a lot. So I want React. I actually don't even want Redux right now. Mm -hmm. I need React DOM. Uh, so it's this from, um, and did we install React DOM? Mm, I don't remember. So, no. Uh, React DOM, let's see if we installed it. No, React Hot Loader, okay. So yarn. So let's see what we what we need to do here. So we have add. Uh, the question is, how do I add to the dev? So yarn add. So yarn help add. Okay, so let's see here. We have uh, yarn add and then a package. Oh, uh, and then D, okay, so yarn, add, but actually React DOM should be in both of them. Um, let me think, so React DOM, yeah, it should be in both. So yarn, add, and React DOM. And does it save? I think it does. 
Okay, so resolving. Okay, so we have React DOM. And then what really do we need here? So we can do React DOM. Oh my god, what a typo. React DOM dot render. And we can do a simple DOM renderer. So we can literally do like H1. So this is a React app. And then by ID and the obligatory app. And I think that's about it. Um, and now we need the index file. Um, so what do we need here? So in our, so let's uh, make directory for dist. And in our dist, we're going to need the index file. So uh, dist, and then index.html. And this is basically just an HTML file. So let's paste it here. All right, so the creative network, uh, we have a viewport here and an ID of app and a bundle JS file. So I'm gonna be brave and do NPM start. Let's see what sort of um, gross errors we have here. Okay. Um, okay, so this is probably some Webpack 2 differ differences um, between what I was running before, which was Webpack 1, and now it's Webpack 2. So let's um, try and work around that. So in our package JSON here, we have the start script and the start script is progress, hot, colors, config, and config is webpack. So in the webpack, we probably have ESLint. Uh, right, so new webpack dot loader options plugin. So here, webpack dot config, we have ESLint here. Mm -hmm. Oh, so the config file is ESLint RC. So maybe that. Uh, but let's, for now at least, let's remove that. Um, so we have fetch and we have define plugin. Oh, sorry, it's not npm install, it's uh, npm start. So let's see here. So let's focus on this screen. Okay, so less of a problem now. Invalid configuration object, webpack has been shy with configuration object that's not matched the API schema. Okay, so for plugins here, I, I I think for now, uh, you know, I, I don't really need this. You know what I mean? 
Um, for now, I don't really need this. I, I just need to see something running. Um, and, and I'm gonna, you know, put those back when I need them. And mm -hmm. then I'm gonna put them back with like Webpack 2 syntax and API um, mm -hmm. and not really worry about a lot of stuff, so. Uh, okay, what else? Okay, so we're gonna we're getting a lot a lot of these. So let's do some googling here. So let's see what we need here in the webpack.config. One option we always have is to, you know, start with Webpack one, see that stuff or run stuffs running, and and then roll back. Um, I don't really need an explanation. What is Webpack two? Uh, so in this project, it's trying to use Webpack two, right? Yeah. But it has incompatible issue with other packages. No, I mean the the configuration file is probably incompatible. Oh. Because you copy paste it from Webpack one configuration. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so Webpack config. Okay, so we have extract text plugin is required, and then we have extract text plugin here. Um, I don't know, nothing here really seems out of order. So model.exports, and then we have entry. Entry is webpack dev server. Client is localhost 8080. Webpack hot only dev, Hubble polyfill, and index. So the issue is that I don't really get where the problem is. So webpack and then progress hot colors and then config. Oh, so. What? Okay, plugins and then it's this and output everything here really looks okay um, we can try to remove item by item and see what's went yeah, wrong we can so modules here and then dev server We can try. Um, I just want to get to a base point where stuff is running, and then we can, you know, resume tomorrow with uh, um, more configuration. Yeah. Okay. So invalid configuration Darwin. object webpack has been initialized using configuration object does not match the API schema configuration resolve extension. Oh, extensions. Okay, so extensions. Okay, so let's roll back here to this. So extension zero should not be empty. But now I think we're gonna be back with the problems we had before. Um, before I remove the plugins, so let's uh, let's try that. I think the ESLint, excuse me, I think the ESLint is also an issue. Yeah. So uh, let's go back here, and then here we can remove the plugins and. 
we can remove ES lint. And then we'll kind of put them back one by one when something is running. But first, let's see if something is running. Okay. Okay, so it's it's starting to build. So things are starting to come together. That's good. Yeah. I don't know why it takes uh, 45 minutes to build a project that has one file, but that's for another episode. Well, I think it's because your computer is just really slow. Because of Skype. No, Skype is not the software that's taking 450,000 million percent. I think it's the OB. OBS? It might OBS. be. OBS. Okay, can't resolve React Hot. And it's no longer allowed to omit the loader suffix when using loaders. Okay, so React Hot. Um, okay, so this is React Hot Loader, save. And then does this try to reload the configuration? Okay, so a lot of file has been built, so that's cool. So in, in React, once you build the file, it won't do it again, right? Well, it it builds everything from scratch every time you run an npm start. Oh, okay. uh, but once you do something that it only builds that part. You know, once you save a file, it only builds that specific file and some dependency, but not everything all over again. Mm. Okay. Okay, so uh, 52%. Um, I think now it should run okay no nope. uh, build failed error the node api for uh, bubble has been moved to bubble core um okay webpack failed to compile okay so let's see where is bubble here so bubble polyfill all right The node module for bubble has been moved to bubble core. All right, let's um, Google this because we are not the first people that got this issue. Okay, so bubble hot loader. All right. So which version? Okay, so test. So JS loader is bubble and it should be bubble loader. All right, let's see. So React hot loader and then bubble. Bubble loader. Well, this we run no okay we're really on the final stages now i think yep so let's see this okay so in the meantime 
Um, let's talk about what we want to do tomorrow. Um, so first of all, we're going to finish up what we were trying to do today. Um, so today we're probably going to have the client side project running and yep. we're not going to have the ability to run spec for sure because we only have a few minutes left. Um, but for tomorrow, I think what we should target is to have the homepage layout done. Okay. Um, you know, to have stuff kind of running there to see how, how they go together. Um, so tomorrow we're targeting to have so we're like targeting the, comp the components to, for the, the home page ready and yeah then re we're targeting to basically have this page ready got it, got uh, it. obviously not connected to the api i mean we're going to try and connect it to the api but once we have the project running everything you know everything is kind of smooth from there on um so you can see webpack compiled successfully okay um and what should happen now is if i go to localhost uh, 8080 um, i should see the server running which you don't yeah because my browser is not forward yeah this is a react app inspect cool yeah man what do you think my console and then uh, failed to load from the server. That's fi five icon. No, that's fine. I mean, we, we don't have a five icon, so that's fine. Uh, but this is a React app from, you know, um, from scratch, right? Uh, we didn't have any starter kit. We don't have anything for better or worse, right? Um, so if we do uh, SRC here and then index, um, index.js and we do this is um, a real react app let's see if we have a hot reload and 8288 what's gonna happen checking boom reloaded the page um, but it reloaded but it didn't replace the module okay so this is a real app wait did it replace the module and I didn't notice um okay so this is this is cool um so let's uh roll back here and react app and while we do that let's look at the browser so real so it's compiling checking and this is react app okay cool actually this should replace in this should replace the module in place uh, but right now this is not a module we're actually changing the app and that's why it's kind of loading everything. Um, so this is awesome. So we actually have this done. So we have the um, we have this done. And what do we? You know, let's try to have at least part of this done. So let me uh, copy over um, an ESLint RC here. ESLint RC and paste it here. What is this again? This is uh, rules defining uh, what you want ESLint to shout about and what you want it to shut up about. Okay, so it's a syntax. Yeah, so you, yeah, so you can essentially say, "Hey, I care about camel case. I care about prop types. I care about uh, multi spaces." And you can say, "Hey, I don't care about them." You know what I mean? Um, so, so this is really a way to enforce uh, to enforce syntax across a project with multiple people, uh, but it's also uh, you know enforcing uh, some some best practices. So now what I want to kind of get back is I want to try and get back the ESLint configuration uh, for the for Webpack. So let me grab that and here we'll go to uh, Webpack here and we can put this back. 
And unfortunately, we're going to need to reload this. And we're in the last five, six minutes of the, of the stream for today. So uh, people in the chat room, if you have any questions or feedbacks, um, definitely one of the feedbacks that I'm already thinking about is that like my computer is so slow that it's slowing me down um, and, and, and it's kind of affecting my mojo. Um, <laughs> so, um, so it's definitely uh, for tomorrow, we're going to need to find, um, to find a better way to do, uh, to do stuff. Uh, maybe students will SSH to my computer. We'll see. So invalid configuration object webpack has been initialized using configuration object that does not match the API schema. So let's see here. Um, webpack to es lint. So someone is So someone is asking a question on Twitch. Uh, I'm going to address the questions uh, one by one. Um, so let's go to the feedback here. And Um, again, eucalyptus elephant, have you used TypeScript before? The answer to that is simple, yes. Um, and then um, just Saul said, why would you use Bubble in 2017 when there are async awaits EDC already? So the answer, the answer to that uh, is really, when I use uh, a pure node project, I, I don't use Bubble anymore. Um, I think for client side, especially with React um, and, and plugins for polyfills and plugins like um, object assign, uh, array from, and stuff like that, you, you, should, you definitely still need Bubble when you do client side apps, um, at, least, at least from my perspective. Uh, and lol cool cat, some kind of face I mean on Twitch chat that I don't really understand um, and <laughs> yeah I mean I don't really understand I, okay so uh, let's go and see this okay so ESLint plugin is seems like uh, let's see Okay, so I'm, I think. Okay, so I have the ESLint here. So modules. Okay. Okay, so let's leave ESLint out for today, and uh, and we will move it for tomorrow. And let's go uh, over here for our to do, and so we have the project running. Um, which gave us a bit of a trouble. We basically um, upgraded from um, um, from uh, Webpack one to uh, Webpack two. So um, some configuration changes. All right, so. For tomorrow, we're going to add the ability to run specs and we are going to have this page up and running. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. So uh, another question on uh, Twitch chat and let's uh, put that in the feedback channel here. Dude, my computer is just intolerable. Um, okay, so um, 
Lolo Cool Cat or LOL, L O L Cool Cat uh, asked a question Have you ever checked out GraphQL? And if so, what do you think about it? And especially its use case with React. So, first, it's a, it's a short answer and, and a long answer. So, the short answer is yes. Um, I, I have checked out GraphQL. Um, actually, in, in the workplace that I work now, we use GraphQL in production. Um, so I definitely know that uh, that part. I definitely know that part working with React and Angular, by the way. Um, and I think GraphQL is awesome if you know how to use it without adding the ability to um, um, to DDoS yourself. I think a lot of people that work with um, with they work with GraphQL, they have all sorts of ability to DDoS themselves inside of their resolver logic. Um, so just by calling some API and requesting some parameters, you can DDoS their service like in three calls. Uh, so I think if you know how to model your data and you know how to denormalize the data into tables and, and cache and stuff like that, it's definitely a very powerful feature. It's a, it's a very powerful product. But I think if you try to um, use GraphQL without Facebook technology or at least Facebook style of reasoning about data, you're in for a world of hurt. Uh, just a world of hurt. Um, so that's the answer for that. Um, another question on uh, Twitch from our loyal friend uh, Eucalyptus Elephant. So which Mac machine are you using right now? And the answer to that is, let's go about this Mac. It, it literally takes seven seconds to load up this, uh, this screen right now. So I'm using um, an, uh, a Retina of mid 2014 with a Core i7, 16 gig. Uh, memory and uh, 500 gigabytes of SSD. Um, yeah, I'm using uh, three screens. One is a uh, built-in for the laptop. One is a Dell 30 inch and another one that is just a 24 inch display. Um, Okay, more questions coming and I like it. Okay, so let's paste in those questions. Um, okay, so which Mac machine are you using right now? I answered. So I saw Facebook created their own framework for React and GraphQL called Relay, was going to check that out. So it's, you know, it's their own framework, but um, you know, you can use that. It's, it's, it's open source. Uh, I think it's also worth uh, checking out. Um, I don't remember the name of the product, but Apollo, I think Apollo. Uh, so they have a framework and a client for GraphQL. Excuse me. So they have a framework and a client for GraphQL that is super, super, super powerful. Uh, I actually saw it in action and it has amazing dev tools. So definitely check that out too. Um, yeah, Apollo, yeah. Um, okay, why you use Sublime to do? There are similar to do plugins for Vim. The answer to that is completely that I just could not find anything that is as nice as this. So normally I use Vim 199%, right? You can see my workflow is all in the terminal. I have Vim up here and then I have a multiplexer um, terminal. So I have Tmux installed. So I have windows and I have um, buffers and I can actually also copy paste between windows and buffers, you know, so it's really awesome. Um, but uh, I, I just could not find anything that is even remotely similar for, for Vim. Um, I did find some org mode plugins and org mode stuff, but yeah, and don't even get me started about Atom. So someone said that Atom is better than Sublime. So I, I agree with that. Atom is better than Sublime, but I just cannot stand using Atom. 
It's too slow, right? Still too slow. So just soul is saying, hold on. I will look for a nice to do. I swear I saw one. So I did see something like this for, for Vim, but it just didn't work. You know, it, it, it just didn't work. Uh, it, it wasn't as nice as this. Um, if you find something, I will, I will pair you with you for 30 minutes as a, as, as a payment. But, uh, I, I, I found, I, I, I was, yeah, I was diligent. I, I tried. Um, yeah. And, and Adam, I, I just, Adam is just impossible for me. I mean, my workflow is so terminal heavy that I, I just can't stand moving between, uh, moving between Adam and, and stuff. So right. Even this, like right now, moving to sublime is untolerable for me. Uh, but um, I, I just do it because it's easy to um, to show it on the stream. Um, okay, any more questions, people in the chat room? Uh, Twitch is really uh, is really awesome for us right now. There is one viewer on YouTube, but uh, everybody is silent. So. Someone is saying Eucalyptus Elephants that Adam plus Vim plugin for me. Um, so look, I, I really don't want to start a religion war here, <laughs> but, uh, but, but there is no way, right? So usually when I work on my, um, on my machine, I work on a 30 inch screen. So I do Vim, um, you know, all, all on, on, uh, sorry. So full screen. And then I can have like a, I, um, I split the screen here and then I split it again um, here. And then I, I run some stuff here in the terminal and I read, um, you know, I have kind of a read pipe here. Um, so it, it's if you look at my uh, at my other streams and uh, like when I work on a Go app or when I work on Ruby and stuff, my my workflow is so heavily keyboard and terminal um on on the, on the keyboard and the terminal that it's just impossible for me to use to use adam um i i just really like the immediacy of of vim in in the terminal when my computer doesn't have obs running <laughs> um yeah, so that's that's the thing for me um, any more questions from people in the chat room? Um, someone said, uh, just saw that he will look for it to do. Uh, if you find any, uh, hit me up on, uh, Twitter. Uh, it's the same, um, it's the same handle as my, um, my, uh, Twitter, my, um, my Twitch user. So, uh, hit me up. Uh, so someone posted a link, just saw posted the links for Vim tasks. Um, yeah, I was looking at that. It just didn't, it just didn't work. Um, did not work for me. Uh, but I will definitely look at that again, you know. Uh, all right. So Stevens, questions, feedback, um, anything for the, for the people in the chat before we wrap it up for tomorrow? Um, nope, not for today. All right. I'm so, good. So, um, tentatively, uh, we're going to do another one tomorrow at 9 30 PM. Uh, please check out the blog post. Uh, I'm going to post a link now to all the chat rooms. Uh, so check out the blog post and, um, you know, comment, uh, give feedback on, um, on Facebook, uh, sorry, on uh, Twitter, um, and uh, let me know what you think. And I'm gonna update the the blog tomorrow with the show notes from today, with all of your questions. Thank you all, sincerely for watching. I mean, we do that for uh, basically for for other people, so uh, we definitely appreciate people watching and 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 engaging. So it's really really awesome of you guys. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you uh, tomorrow. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye.